You guys ready? You ready for the word? My, uh, my, my, my. Here we are. Paul Cooley. Thank you. Give him a hand. Well, isn't God good? I didn't like that. Isn't God good? That was better. Good job. If you would, uh, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30. We're going to uh, read chapter 30, 1 Samuel. And just to give you a little background, this is talking about uh, David has been out fighting with his mighty men. And now they are coming back. They were sent back, um, back basically to where their families were at this time. Starting in verse 1. And it came to pass when David and his men had come to Ziklag on the third day. And the Amalekites had invaded the south of Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And had taken the women captive and therein they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were there with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. So, so get this, like, they're, they're out doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're, they're fighting. They're doing their thing. They come home, and now their wives, their sons, their daughters have been kidnapped. And if you take a minute and put yourself in their shoes, that's not a fun feeling. That's a horrible, that's a nightmare right there. That's horrible stuff. And I find it kind of interesting that they wept so hard they could not weep anymore. I mean, that was, that's some hard weeping going on. That's not just shedding a tear and getting mad and let's go kick some butt. I mean, these guys, this kind of like leveled them. They wept till they could not weep anymore, which then it just kind of gives you an idea and it paints a picture of the emotional state that they were in. And it even says, uh, was it verse 6, that David was so greatly distressed because the people spake of stoning him. This is their great leader. They were following the leader. And now this bad thing has happened. If you, if, once again, if you put yourself in David's shoes, you are the leader. You're in charge of a great army. You're doing what the Lord's told you to do. You come back. And now this great, horrible thing has happened. And now your friends are saying, you know, maybe we should kill him. Where's a rock? <laughs> it's not a good place to be. But David does something that I find so, so cool because this is not necessarily the natural thing. If I was in this situation, if you were in this situation, we might have a whole bunch of different types of emotions and we might find ourselves handling this in different ways. And I would hope that it's safe to say that all of us would handle it the way that David did. Hopefully that is true. But if you keep reading verse 6, it says that even though people are talking about killing him, stoning him, that David had no one to turn to. But what did he do? He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He did not roll over. He did not give up because at that point in time, he had an opportunity to give up, to agree with the people, to question maybe, did I really hear God? Were we supposed to have gone out? Maybe we should have stayed here with the kids. Maybe we should have camped somewhere else. There's a whole bunch of things that he could have been going through his mind that could have wiped him out completely and ruin the rest of his life. But he didn't. He encouraged himself in the Lord, and then he inquired of the Lord. He said, God, what do you want us to do? Are we go are we, do we stay? Do we go? Do we take back? What do we do? The Lord gave him specific instructions, and all was restored, which is an awesome thing. And oddly enough, I'm not so much uh, bringing this to you to say you should encourage yourself in the Lord, although you should, but that's actually not the main point. <laughs> the main point, and the reason why this has been brought up to me, because I started thinking about guys in the Bible that just did not give up. They, they had something about them that no matter what was thrown at them, they would not turn their back on God. They would not give up. They would not question God. They, they just would keep going. 
And this, I think, is a prime example because it shows you what a man, what a real man of God and a real woman of God does is they say, no, 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 I might not have anybody to turn to right now. Everyone might hate my guts, but I will encourage myself in the Lord. I am not giving up. There was something, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, Word of the Lord was brought by Gary, and I want to read it to you because I... I really, it, it hit me, hit me, it hit me hard, but I think in a good way. And I'm sure it hit different people different ways. But this is what the Lord spoke a couple weeks ago. You have plowed the hard ground. You prepared the soil, you planted the seeds, and nothing came up. And you said, Lord, I'll do it again. And you plowed hard ground, and you prepared the soil, and you planted the seed, and weeds came up. And I'm telling you here today, sons and daughters, plow the ground one more time. Prepare the ground, plant the seed, and I will give you a harvest that far exceeds your expectations. You have served me well, and I am so pleased with you. I am a God of abundance, and I am not a God of lack. It is my great desire to bless you with abundance. I, your sovereign God, has spoken. There's a lot that can be taken from that. I know for me, and maybe for you, you could relate to some of those things, if not all of those things. Because what does that look like? That looks like Man, you know, I'm, I'm plowing the ground, and I'm preparing the soil, and I'm planting the seeds, and I'm expecting good things. Because, you know, when, when one plus one doesn't equal two, it bugs me. Because I, I, that, it's supposed to be two right now. And for some reason, zero just showed up. I might have messed up. Let me do it. One plus one. Now I got negative. What is going on up in here? Because what that looks like is, okay, there's these family members, or maybe there's these coworkers, and I'm praying for, and I'm plowing the ground, and I'm preparing the soil. And, and man, I am interceding on their behalf, and I'm expecting them. Man, I'm expecting God to do great things in their life. And then they become real jerks. And they become the opposite of what I was praying for. And like, what happened? I might have not prayed hard enough. Let me do it again. So I'm praying for them. I'm plowing the ground, praying. I'm like, God's going to get them. And then they go off the deep end. And they hate my guts. What happened? Or maybe it looks like, man, I know God is faithful. I know I am. I am. Man, I'm I'm plowing that ground. It's hard ground, but I'm plowing the ground, and I'm preparing the soil, and I'm planting the seeds. And and I know I don't have a lot of money, but I'm still tithing. I'm still giving because God says, we hear almost every week, that God is going to give back to, you know, and he'll restore and all these good things. And yet I'm doing these things, and one plus one is not equaling two. In fact, I'm giving, and it's becoming worse. But I know God's faithful. Maybe I'm doing this wrong. So I'm doing it again, and I'm doing it again. And now I'm, I'm still tithing. I'm still giving. I'm still sowing. I'm believing God. Man, a good harvest. Not because I'm greedy, but God's word says it. It should happen. I just lost my job. Sorry, Martin. Not, not, it's not direct towards you. But uh, you know, I just lost my job and all these things, and all hell is breaking loose financially. And yet I've been obedient. I've been doing the things. I've been out fighting. I've been out doing the things that God has called me to do. And yet now this bad thing has happened. One plus one suddenly did not equal two, and I don't know why. What is going on? I know God's faithful, but I'm still going, what's going on? I want to know what is happening. So when God gave that word two weeks ago, I actually got really happy. (laughs) Some of us didn't, obviously, no. I did, and here's why I got happy about this. First and foremost, I'm like, yes, God just totally acknowledged the fact that one plus one has not been equaling two, which brought me great joy because I'm like, he acknowledged the fact, and if he's acknowledging the fact that things have not been working, and he gave a very simple instruction, do it one more time. He acknowledged, if he acknowledges this thing, then he's going to do something. 
And I'm excited about it because I can plow one more time. I can, I can plant this seed one more time. We're getting good at it. And it's, again, it's not out of selfish motives. It's I want God to be glorified. I want one plus one equals two because two will glorify God. Amen. That is what I want. So it's not a thing to where, oh, man, I got this one more time, and I'm, I'm just, this is just getting discouraging because every time I'm doing this, every time I've done this, it does not work. And when something does not work, it's time to do something else. It's easy to justify that, isn't it? Real easy. Because I'm not stupid. If this isn't equaling out, they got to do it something different. <laughs> but God's saying, no, no, it doesn't matter what it looks like. You have an opportunity. You can give up. You can say it doesn't work. You can, you can go on the sideline there. Or you can say, I'm not giving up. I'm encouraging myself and Lord, despite what it looks like, despite what I feel, God is faithful. Amen. And that is the final answer. God is faithful. And because God has said he's spoken a thing, then I'm not giving up. Hey, you got you almost we almost got to come to a point where we got some like we got some some determination, we got some grit, we got some Holy Ghost grit going on, saying, I don't care. Devil, whatever you throw at me. I was thinking, you know, a couple weeks ago when Sandy did the, the couples thing, and we we're all kind of corralled in here, and and it was like the three-week thing. There might be some challenges for the next three weeks. I'm thinking, three weeks? That's nothing. We can totally handle three weeks. That's a walk in the park. Because because we're not giving up. We we know where we stand. We're not giving up. Amen. <laughs> and because we're not giving up, we can walk in full expectancy that this time the harvest is coming. This time. Those people that I've been praying for and praying through and they became jerks and they went crazy and they went off the deep end. No, no, I'm expecting God to get them because we're going after souls. And the financial stuff, I'm expecting that too because that is a part of this. I hate to tell you, but if you got an issue with money, you're going to have issues in ministry because you need money to run a ministry. This is not free. Newsflash, it's not free. You need stuff. I can't, if, if the harvest doesn't come in, that was promised, and I'm supposed to maybe put this guy up in a hotel for the next six months. I can't do that, can I, if I don't have that harvest? I can't go and feed that homeless guy. Sorry, I'm broke as you. It doesn't work. That's not giving God glory. That just sucks, actually. Oh, man, yeah, I could keep going on that. Um, but all the different things that, that maybe I've given up on, maybe the different things that I've put to the side because one plus one was not equaling two, those things we can bring before God and say, this is part of the harvest. Because, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not thinking that what I'm, what I'm preparing right now, what I'm plowing right now, what I'm sowing right now, that harvest is coming. But I'm also thinking all the past stuff was not done in vain. That was not wiped out. There's, there's going to be a mighty harvest from all that back stuff. We're getting like back pay on this. That, I, I'm serious. That's what we're going for because we're not giving up. Man, you know, because you know, I'm not, I don't I'm get tired of going at this like passively. No, that is what is happening. We got to have that drive. Kind of like the Jacob, you know, the man who, who was known to wrestle with God. We got to be able to say, I'm going before God. And, and this is not, again, this is not out of selfish ambitions or motives. This is because I want God to be glorified. That is the goal. I want him to be glorified. We want that. And we've got to, I, ooh, I don't like the being restricted in any area of that. I want God to be glorified. So I'm going to go at it, dig our heels in deeper, and say, I'm not giving up. This is, this is it. God said one more time, I can do one more time. Can you? Great things happen to people that have that kind of determination that, that says, I will never give up. History actually, 
I mean, we could, we could cover many, many, many people in the Bible that never gave up. But if you continue, just keep going down history, there is an awesome track record of people who never gave up. Did you know Abraham Lincoln, before he was president, lost his job, was defeated for state legislator, failed in business, his sweetheart died, he had a nervous breakdown, defeated for House Speaker, defeated for nominated of Cong for Congress, lost renomination, rejected for land officer, defeated for nomination for vice president, and again, defeated for U.S. Senate. I don't know about you, but maybe even just a quarter of the way through, I'd say, you know, politics is not for me. <laughs> but this guy didn't give up, and aren't we glad he didn't? I mean, Thomas Edison. Did you know he was declared... In school, he was declared to be too stupid to learn anything. And he was fired from two jobs for being unproductive. And then we all know he failed a thousand times before creating a working light bulb. And he had the attitude, no, 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 when he was questioned, I just found a thousand ways not to build this thing. I don't give up. And aren't we glad he didn't? Henry Ford, did you know... He lost two car companies and went bankrupt before founding Ford Motor Company. You would think maybe after the first one didn't work or the second one, maybe this auto thing's not going to work. Let's stick with the horse and buggy thing. I don't know. I'm glad he didn't. Walt Disney was fired from his job as editor because he lacked imagination and had no original ideas. And his first animation company went bankrupt. And he was turned down 200 times when seeking financing to create Disneyland. Should I keep going? These are people that did not give up. Oh, I'll do it. Everyone loves Lucy, right? She was told she had no talent, could not act, and needed to get out. Dr. Seuss wanted to burn his book, his first manuscript, after it had been rejected 27 times by publishers. Did you know Steve Jobs was fired by Apple back in the day? And he came back. And lastly, a man named Howard Schultz, if you don't know. If he had given up after being turned down 242 times from banks and investors, there would be no Starbucks. And where would you be without your Starbucks? <laughs> Rich, yeah, there you go. There's where all your seeds go in is Starbucks. We found the, we got an altar call right now. <laughs> we can go home now, I think. That's good. <laughs> this is just a good reminder to never give up. Despite what you've gone through, despite what you're going through, the Lord is still very much on your side. Second Chronicles 15, 7 says, Be strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak and slack, for, the wor for your work shall be rewarded. And we hold tight to that and know that God is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. And he has spoken, he has said a thing, the harvest is coming, and we will believe it. Amen? Let's all stand. Worship team coming back up. I've found that often when we, when we come to a place, when we're struggling in this area, when we're struggling with trying to figure out, okay, you know, this is not working, life is horrible, all this, all, all that, you know, garbage is happening. I found that there's two things that can really snap you out of it. And if you're not doing these things, you'll usually go deeper into it. And fall, you can fall into despair and depression and, and what David had the opportunity to fall into. He could have fallen into depression, but he didn't. He did not give up, and he encouraged himself in the Lord. But I found two things that help greatly, and that is prayer and praise. If you're not able to praise God through your circumstances, there's something wrong with you. 
And we have to come to a place and realizing, oh, well, maybe this is why this thing is happening. God's working something out in me because I got a really lousy attitude in all this. So if that's you, you can definitely come up and get that fixed. But what I'd like you to do today as we just worship the Lord is take a moment. And if you've found yourself in a place of going, wow, I have started to give up. Maybe I have given up. But I, at least maybe on the, I'm on the verge of giving up. We can't tolerate that either. I can't tolerate that in my life. You can't tolerate that in your life because we're not allowing and accepting those lies of the enemy saying, yeah, but what if, what if the harvest doesn't come this time? I don't know if I can handle another heartbreak. What if it, what if? No, we're, we're, we're putting the what ifs at the altar, hanging on the cross because that's where the what ifs belong. God said a thing, we believe it, that settles it. So if you find yourself struggling believing, if you find yourself struggling in any of those areas, I want you to just come forth and, and give that to the Lord. Be honest with the Lord and hand that over to him so he can renew and strengthen and give you some of that Holy Ghost grit to say, I'm not giving up. I will do this one more time. I will even with great joy, I will plow that ground. I will prepare that soil. I will plant that seed and I will see a mighty harvest beyond anything that I could ever expect or imagine. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word is true. And Lord, I thank you for how good and faithful you are. Lord, we want you to be honored. We want you to be glorified. And Lord, as we stand in belief that the harvest is coming, Lord, we say and we commit that harvest to you. Lord, we want it to bring you glory. May it never be about us. May it always be all about you. And may a lost and dying hurting world see it and know that there is a living God and a mighty Savior. We love you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come up, worship the Lord, for he is good. And we're not giving up. Yeah? you got to convince me a little bit better. We're not giving up. There we go. Worship the Lord today.
over hallelujah your glory fills this place we shout an ending praise forever hallelujah 